Hello Drummers and Other Creatures. It's another train beat video. In this one, I'm gonna talk about how we can develop the skill to play fills while we're playing a train beat and, and kind of keep the flow going. And, and this is about drilling some basic uh, vocabulary really for, for different fill patterns and just allowing the flow to develop while doing it at a slow pace. At the end of the day, all of my videos are basically telling you slow whatever it is you're doing write down and, and build it up from there. And I think a lot of the time, people are going a little bit too fast. So um, I'll explain the background to this. There, there's been quite a few requests in, in comments and so on about the train beat, and I didn't realize it was that popular. Um, and it might be just that the, the, I think the second most watched video that I did in ancient times already, many, many years ago before I took this whole process seriously, but I did a thing where I, I explained the basic train beat and it's got loads and loads of views, like way more than anything else. And so maybe people watching that video have then seen my other videos, thank you very much for checking it out. Um, and then asking me sort of follow up questions. Uh, and maybe the train beat is just a lot more popular than I, I realized. Um, and maybe both of, both of those things are true. Anyway, so um, recently somebody asked me about the beat on a song. Uh, it was a cover of Adele McCory song, a sort of bluegrass thing. I'm really sorry uh, the, the name eludes me now. Um, but it was a nice, you know, uh, old-fashioned bluegrass tune. Uh, and another one, a uh, chap called Todd, asked me about a song called Thumbelina by The Pretenders, and I was, I was really glad to be reminded about that, because that's from a record called Learning to Crawl, and it's something I listened to hundreds and hundreds of times when I was a kid, in the olden days when you had a record, you put the record on a tape, put your tape in the Walkman, and you listen to the same thing over and over and over again, because... If you wanted another record, you had to go and, and spend your money and buy another one. So there was a limit to how much music you could listen to, really. But Learning to Crawl is a beautiful album. Martin Chambers playing the drums and a song there called Thumbelina, which is a really great train beat. It's, it's a very edgy uh, sound to that uh, record and that track in particular. The lyrics are really good as well. As somebody who's sort of more or less lyric deaf, um, I always found the, the imagery um, Chrissy Hind uh, puts across there really... Uh, kind of cool, it, it resonated with me for some reason, I don't know, because the scenario isn't anything to do with me, but, okay, so I'm going to think about Thumbelina now, and um, I'm going to play a little bit of a train beat and do some fills, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of perspective on how to evolve your vocabulary in that direction. Let's see if I can evoke the feeling of the song in my mind. Anyway, there you go, a little bit of train beat with some just snare drum fills there. And a lot of the time, that's all you need. Maybe we'll look at, uh, at some toms and some cymbals as well, but it's all more or less the same stuff, really. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating some patterns uh, to play in the second half of the bar. Now, when we're playing the train beat, most of the time I think it would be uh, reasonable to think of it as a uh, 16th, and we're playing accents on the ands of the bar. So we're going one e anna, two e anna, three e anna, four e anna, one e anna, two e. So that's where the snare drum accent is. And then the bass drum is going to be on the one, two, three, and four. One e anna, two e anna, three e anna, four e anna. Two e anna, three e anna, four e anna. Okay, so we're thinking about that, and that means that the, the fill we're going to play will be made out of the 16th note possibilities of 3 E an a, 4 E an a, which is eight notes, 3 E an a, 4 E an a. And we could accent or not accent any one of those eight notes to create some patterns. Now, uh, I could recommend a bunch of uh, books like uh, Accents and Rebounds. Uh, Joel Rothman's got a a book full of accent patterns. I think if you um, look at like uh, Joe Morello's Master Studies, there are various sections of that book with different accent patterns. And you can go and drill like loads of accent patterns. There's ways that you can use uh, syncopation 
as well to come up with lots of different accent patterns. But today, absent all of that, we can just think of some accent patterns. So if I, for instance, decided to accent uh, the three, the and, and then the four. Three, e, and, a, four, e, and, a. a. Very simple pattern. Three, e, and, a, four, e, and, a. So that the, the fill in the bar would be one, e, and, a, two, e, and, a, three, e, and, a, four, e, and, a. Uh, and then we can try and incorporate that into a bar playing the normal train beat on the snare. Okay, now practice that a bunch of times so that you feel comfortable with the pattern in, in a one bar little sequence and then add it to a bar of the regular train beat with just the accents on the ands. So we play a normal train beat and then we play the bar, the second bar with the fill in it. So we're going to go. Okay, it's quite a simple pattern. Let's think of something else. I'm just I'm randomly coming up with ideas. Um, three E, four E, right? So we're going to go three E, four E, three E, four E. So all together in the train beat configuration, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay. Now, when you start doing these alternating patterns, you notice that in order to produce the louder stroke, the accent, the hands need to move in different ways. And I think that, that one of the reasons people find it a little bit difficult at first to vary their train beat is because the hands get very used to this sort of smooth pattern where the stick goes up, down, up, down to produce that train beat. Again, you, you can watch my uh, other video to, to get some insight into how uh, I, I present the, the movement of the hands, but basically there's this pumping motion. So in my case with the right hand lead, I'm just going up and down with my right hand, the left hand just stays and plays taps. And if you don't work on this at a slow and gentle pace at first, when you try to do it at speed, um, the hands kind of go, oh, am I going up, down, where am I going, what's happening? And that's why it gets a bit clunky, I suspect, okay? So we went three E and a four E and a. Let's try another pattern. Again, I'm just pulling them out of the air. So we'll go three E and a four this time, right? Three E and a four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a four. Okay, so we've got right, left accent, left, right. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. Now, there is a whole sort of educational philosophy around how you learn to move your sticks in accordance to what the dynamic levels are going to be called the level system which I think is really good it teaches you all about how to play upstrokes downstrokes taps and full strokes and uh, there's loads of ways of combining those things and you can really drill that a lot and I think that's quite a good thing to learn but I think at first if you just try and keep yourself very very relaxed and let your ears guide you and, and see what your hands want to do um, and then maybe come to a, a sort of more academic approach 
uh, after you've had to go with this a little bit. Because if, if you start with these things too early, I suspect sometimes it might cause us to overthink. I know it, it does that to me. But uh, I'm not saying that to put you off. If you're interested in it, go and look up the level system and, and maybe I'll do some stuff about that at some point. But um, anyway, that's a, that's a, I'm drifting off, okay? So we went three, E, and uh, four. Now once I've practiced that a bunch of times, again, I'll put that with one bar of just the regular train beat and in the second bar I'm gonna play the fill. If I do study the level system, I'm going to learn a whole series of things that will uh, tell my hands where to go in anticipation of the next note, which, which can be quite good. Anyway, now, once you've practiced something like that and you've got that flowing really nicely at a slow tempo, and, you know, and it's a really good idea, forget about Thumbelina for now or, or whatever you want to play, because those things are brisk. Uh, so get your body feeling really comfortable at a slow tempo and then try and speed it up. And then there's a two bar phrase. And so on and so on, okay? Start off slow and relaxed, and then you can increase the tempo. And really spend some time, again, I'm condensing things into what I'm hoping will be a reasonably short video. This might be weeks of work, months of work, I don't know. Okay, now, I'm just being very random with the patterns. Uh, I might feel generous and make up a PDF with some accent patterns you can practice, but again, you come up with any, any way of accenting those last eighth notes, um, last eight sixteenths. Um, but okay, I'll, I'll do one more pattern. Uh, one, two, three, four. So three E a uh, four R. Uh. So just go E a uh, four R. Uh. E a uh, four R. Uh. E a uh, four and. Sorry, four and. Right. One and two. Uh, one and two and three E a uh, four and. One and two and three E a uh, four and. Put that again into one bar of regular train beat, one bar fill. Now, when you've got the hang of that, the next thing to do would be to throw some of those accents on the toms. So, for example... And if you want to add the crashes as well, that's cool, but this time you want to follow the cymbals with the bass drum, you want to play a unison. So you can't just, you can't just keep that going on the one, two, three, four, you're going to have to disrupt it. Uh, how would that work? see, I've slowed it down, I'm thinking about it, now I'm playing my, my foot as a one drop, like, like a reggae thing. Right, okay, let's try that again.
really, that's the essence of that. Think of some patterns to practice. You could work out, for instance, uh, what the sort of common accents are in the song that you, you like, and then have a go at learning them really slowly and then putting them together as two bar phrases. Once you're happy with that, the next thing to do is just do it in four bar phrases and then improvise with some music. So. Okay, I hope that shed some light on the subject of how to develop your, your fills, at least the simple stuff relating to the train beat. Um, that sort of, I don't know, yeah. I'll put up a little PDF with some exercises to do as well, just to help the cause. Uh, let me know what you thought of that and if that helps you get to where you want to go. If you've got any follow-up questions, feel free to ask. I'm pretty responsive and uh, I'm, I'm enthusiastic to listen to what uh, people are interested in who are watching my videos and try and, uh, you know, take my part in the conversation with my fellow drummers. Um, that'll do for today. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. It's really helpful. If you're interested in getting some drum lessons and I can help you one-on-one, -on -one, I'm available on the internet and also as a real human being in Northwest London. So feel free to get in touch with me using the information in the box below. Uh, meanwhile, I think it's time for you to go off and practice. <laughs>